For this activity, we're going to look at Monet's caricatures. It's for levels grade five and six. And what's really exciting about this is a lot of people don't know that Monet did caricatures. So when he was about 15, he was drawing caricatures and he did that before he went into art school. So he's done these wonderful, wonderful pictures and this is what he was actually well known for. And I think it's really good to do this with the students because he did this when he was a student at the age of 15 and it's a real opportunity for the students to connect to the younger Monet. So I'm going to just look at a few of them and you'll need to explain to the students what a caricature is. So it's a picture of someone and they've exaggerated uh, parts of their face, face or facial features. So these are some of Monet's caricatures. There's lots of things to look at in this. We're going to be focusing on the element of line, but there's also tone, because you can see the darks and the lights. And this one, they're quite funny. This one's been turned into an insect. Beautiful, clear shapes and beautiful drawing. Again, the lines going around the eyes, lots of detail and for the work of a 15 year old, obviously he was very talented from the beginning. I love this and the students will be able to relate to the humour, this giant, ginormous nose and the bowler hat and the little body. I'll put this one in and it's got um, some colour and we're going to be introducing colour as well. Although some of them don't have colour, we will be introducing colour. The light and shade, the tone really stands out here and the strong facial features. This gives the students a real opportunity to look at those shapes. And this is the one that I'm going to be working with today. So the equipment that you're going to be using, we're going to work on craft paper because we're going to be using pastels and white pastel will come up really nicely on the craft paper again. So craft paper, you'll need a reference of one of the caricatures. We're going to be using tracing paper, grey leads, you'll need a soft grey lead and you can use a harder one as well, I'll explain while I'm doing it, a fine liner and a piece of cartridge paper. So the first thing you're going to do is give each student a reference of one of Monet's caricatures and let them have a really good look at it. We're going to use tracing paper. Now I have only used tracing paper once with my students but I will be doing it again and they loved it. They thought it was magic. So to do a tracing paper drawing, the first, the first layer, I'm going to go for a, what's that, a 2B, so still quite soft. Students do need to make sure that the paper doesn't move, the tracing paper. You can either tape it to the photocopy or they can hold it. I'm just going to hold mine. And they don't need to do all the details. They need to do the main lines. So the first step is to go over all the main lines with a reasonably soft pencil. And I'm going to do that now. Here I go. Okay, so I've done the first layer of grey lead. I'm just going to take the photocopy away. You'll be using that later, so keep the copy. Now, if I turn this around and I worked on this drawing, the drawing would come back to front. It's a mirror image. So you actually have to go over the lines twice. So you have a scrap piece of paper now and put it underneath the tracing paper. And now with a softer pencil, 
So I've got a 6B now, because I want the grey lead to be very soft so when we go back over the top, it'll come onto the paper easily. So I'm gonna go over the lines, trying to keep true to the lines that I've drawn. Again, you can tape this onto the piece of paper or you can hold it still. And I'm gonna do that for the second time. So I'm gonna do that now. So I've done that twice, Oof. so I can remove my scrap piece of paper. Now students will need to make sure that they turn it over again so it's facing the same way as their photocopy. And now you, they can put it on their good sheet of paper, which is the craft paper, work out the position. Again, you could use a little bit of tape if you want to, I'm happy just to hold it, but I know that some students have moved it and then if they move it they've got to move it back into the right position, which they can do, and it's a good lesson in itself. So find out where you want it to go. I'm gonna go down to a, a little bit of a harder pencil now. And now what you do is you just rub over all the lines that you've done, like this. Okay, I'm at the end now. So you can lift your tracing paper, and phew, it worked. <laughs> and you will have the image of the caricature the right way around. And I would stop the lesson here. And now we're gonna talk about line. Now I would take a cartridge sheet of paper, because going, you're going to move on to fine liner. But before you use the fine liner, this is an opportunity for you to talk to the students about mark making and the weight of the line and how you use the line. So I'm going to make a exploration sheet, which the students can do. I'm gonna talk while I do it, so you can see what I'm doing. So the first thing I like the students to realize is that there is weight in line. So take the pen, and you draw as soft and as light as you can and as the line goes down you gently press harder and harder and harder and you can go do that a few times soft hard soft hard so i'm going soft hard soft hard soft hard and that's giving the line weight and it's giving the line depth because if you look at it it looks like where you're going softer, that the light's hitting, and where it's darker, it's like a shadow, so it gives line interest. Then there's cross hatching, so lines going one way and crossing back the other way. So I would get the students to do that several times, bringing the lines closer makes it darker. going the other way, and also talk to them about how you move your pen. I'm moving my pen fast so the lines become quite fine, but if you do it slowly with more purpose, it looks completely different. So here's slow with purpose. That looks completely different to light and fast. So I've cross hatched two ways, but you can actually go three, four, which I'll show you now. So that's one, two, three, four. 
and I could keep going again. And what happens when you keep cross hatching and working the lines over, it makes it darker. And that means students can control tone, light and darkness with pen by just doing lines. So get them to just play with their pens and make a whole page of cross hatching, lines, what happens if they move their pen fast, what happens if they go slow, and that they can refer back to that page. So when you're ready, go back to your drawing. You will need your reference photocopy. And now we want to use our fine liner and put in all those lines. So you're using your trace, tracing page as, as the starting point, but you're also referring back to the photocopy. So you need to use both. The lines are going to be in the right place with the tracing paper, but the photocopy is going to give you all those extra lines. So I'm going to put my head down now and I'm going to work between the two and I'm going to try and put in the thicker lines and a bit of the weight. So I'm just getting to the end and I'm just checking some of my lines and the weight. So I'm trying to make the dark parts dark, make sure they really are dark. Maybe the ear could stand out a little bit more. So I'm just making that a little bit darker. Just checking my eyebrows to the picture and what I have, making sure that is dark. The eye, the nose, is that dark enough? Yep, just checking under. His nose is a bit darker, so I'm going to add a few more lines because it's darker. The bottom of the beard is darker, so I'm going to add a few more lines because that's darker. I'm not putting too much line work in the jacket. and You'll see why in a second. So when you're satisfied with your drawing, we're going to put the pens down and now we're going to bring in the dry pastel. Now, Dry pastel is beautiful and it's soft and it can smudge and it can be very, very gentle and that's how we're going to use it. I want you to discuss with your students about using a little bit, just a little bit. So to show you what I mean is I'm going to do the jacket in blue. I'm going to just do a little bit and a little bit and I'm going for the darker sort of spots at the moment. And now with my finger, and that's all the pastel I use, so I've only used just a little bit. Now with my finger, I'm just going to gently smudge it in. Now, I can see, do I need a little bit more or am I happy or do I need a bit of light? So if I want a bit of light, I can put a bit of a lighter colour in. Smudge that. 
on the shoulders a little bit lighter. So I'm going to use a bit of that aqua and smudge that in. And a little bit of blue on the collar here. So now I'm going to put some flesh colour into the face. Again, I just want to use a little bit because it's hard to take away, you can add to it. So explain that to the students, it's better to use a little bit and then have a little bit more and a little bit more than have too much and you can't go backwards. So again, I'm just going to do a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and a little bit there and take my finger and gently smudge that in. I can use a bit more, I want that a bit darker. I'm going to just more there. I haven't coloured in the whole face, I'm just doing little bits. And I'm going to just smudge that in. Now I love to do my shadows in purple. So I'm going to use purple and use this where the shadows are, so around the nose bottom around the beard and the collar and there was a little shadow there I put in with pen and a little shadow there so that's my shadows and now I'm going to just blend that in that's a lot so now I'm going to just go over that a little bit a little bit just a little bit Okay, I'm happy with that. And now for the real highlight, white. So a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. Looking down the nose, on the bridge of the nose. Often on the nostril, you'll get a light reflect. And very, very gently, just slight, so softly blend that in. <laughs> right, I like that, so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go down, uh, no, I'll do the hair next. So I'm going to go for a dark brown. Just put some streaks in. The same rule applies. Little bits and blend. So I'll put my little bit of pastel in and now I'm just gonna blend that in. Because remember, you've got the line to back you up. This is just highlighting. Okay, so I need a little bit more around here, the beard, and at the top of the head. And where it, it's darker and there's a bit more weight of the hair here, I can do a bit more. No, I don't want to use black. Okay, so I am going to darken this part of his outfit. And his leggings, I'm going to go back to the blue and a bit of white, again, just to highlight his legs. And this is not, has no color, so I'm just, just cho choosing little bits and just putting the color in and a bit of white not making it perfectly checkered, but just little, little bits and blend. Handy tip, I'm not doing it. My fingers are a mess, but it is a handy tip to blend, change fingers when blending. So have a blue finger, a brown finger, a cream finger, and use your different fingers. Okay, so all I need to do now is the collar and I'm going to do the leg shadow. So I'm just going to do the collar in white, like a white shirt. I'm going to just dull that purple down a little tiny bit. And I'm going back to the brown. I could use a grey, I might use a grey. So wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and pulling the line out. blending. Now with the black, 
I wasn't going to use black, just, just to pull out a bit of that hair at the bottom. And a tiny bit of skin colour, just to make that ear stand out. And this is adding little bits and little bits. So I've working in little bits, I've blended, and now I'm going back with the pastel and just touching it here and there in little bits to make it stronger and make it pop out. Okay, I'm going to stop now. I'm really happy with that. So to recap what we've just done, you've done your tracing paper, and then you've given the students spatial awareness by the mirror and turning it over and teaching them about the opposite. You've done line, then you've reworked the line and done the weight of the line. And now we're adding colour and being gentle and working with our pastel skills. And now we have a finished work. The students will be wrapped because they've, they've actually looked at a picture and although they've drawn it with tracing paper, they've got They've gone through a whole process and they've got this remarkable image of Monet's work. So then the next thing we need to do is think about how we're going to display it. For display, uh, there's two ways I'd go about it. One, I would be very tempted to hang the work up and also hang the process up because the tracing paper looks quite good as well, the, just the dark and light, so you could put the tracing paper and the photocopy and the artwork up and so you can actually see the process which is really interesting. Or I quite like the idea of a wall full of newspaper because caricatures are often related to newspaper and cartoonists out of newspaper and have newspaper and then the craft paper on top so it's not so stark as black and craft and hang them all up with, again, an explanation or a title. Monet's caricatures.